And, uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> Microphones at my church aren't that powerful. How wonderful to see so many of you here this afternoon. You don't know me, my name's Louise, and I'm the area dean, AKA head girl in the deanery. I think that's how we put it. How embarrassing. Anyway, this is a great moment, isn't it? You, you know Mike well, he's been ministering here now for nearly, what was it, two or three years now, and he's doing an amazing job. And today he's getting an upgrade, and he's going to become uh, the priest in charge, both of here and also Christ Church. So it's a day of great rejoicing. Thank you if you've already turned out this morning for church. Here's another go. Um, above all, we're praying for this next step, this next chapter in God's work here at St. John's. It's been going a long time. Please, God, it will continue to go and to thrive and for there to be much new life. So if we can just take a moment uh, to be quiet, to recognize God's presence with us, and to invite the Spirit to come and enliven our worship and our hearts. And so we stand and sing together, King of Kings, Majesty. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please be seated. It's great to be here this afternoon to license Mike 
as the parish priest of this benefice, which is St. John Southend, and South Church, Christ Church. It is a great new beginning. Mike has been leading ministry here in this church last three years, um, and now, so now we are beginning to expand, to revitalize the church next to you. And it is really a wonderful moment to welcome Mike as the priest in charge of both the parishes of South Church, Christ Church, and St. John's South End. We have come together in the presence of God to welcome Michael and his family, Rebecca, Daniel, Matthew, and Chloe, to these parishes, to license him to the ministry he will share, to pray for Michael and for those who minister with him, and to dedicate ourselves afresh to the service of God in these communities and the call which God makes of each one of us. Let us therefore wait humbly upon God, giving thanks for all that God has done and asking forgiveness for those ways in which we have failed each other, our communities, and God. Let us confess our sins to the Lord in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Right Reverend Father in God, after due consultation and prayerful consideration, Michael has been nominated and has accepted to be priest in charge of St. John the Baptist, South End, and Christ Church, South Church. I now present him to you to be licensed. Thank you. I thank you and all those who with prayer have been involved in the appointment of Michael to these parishes. Michael, do you believe, so far as you know your own heart, that God has called you to serve here? I believe that God has called me. Will you? Commit yourself to the mission and ministry of the people in this place to further the kingdom of God. With the help of God, I will. And so, people of God, will you welcome Michael and support and uphold him in his ministry, now and in the years to come? With the help of God, you. Will you stir up the gift of God which is in you? to work with Michael for the building of God's kingdom here. Let us pray. God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servant Michael, now to be licensed, the needful gifts of grace, 
through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Okay, hi, the reading today is from 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 to 25. Christ crucified is God's power and wisdom. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that particular reading you heard from the book of 1 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians was written to a group of exceptionally gifted people in the church. So here is a group of Christians who are exceptionally gifted. You go through the book, read through the chapters, you find people exceptionally gifted. Paul goes on listing the gifts they have. It is never a comprehensive list. It is just some examples of the gifts that God has given. And they also came from some kind of knowledgeable background, and they excelled in wisdom too, because most of them came from Gentile background, with a background of Greek, Roman philosophy and understanding. And possibly they were excelling in both wisdom and power in their own understanding. When you are so gifted, you feel power too. And when you feel that you got wisdom, you feel some kind of power and authority over others. But you need to remember that these people were in a very vibrant mega city, a cosmopolitan city of very strategic importance. What an opportunity for mission. But actually, they were not doing much mission. What they were doing, as far as we can see from the letter, is fighting with one another. They had divisions. They started following individual leaders. And that they started to actually claim that we belong to Paul, we belong to Peter, we belong to somebody else. Divisions among the people of God. And as you read through the chapters, you realize the internal issues with which this particular congregation was struggling. It was an inward-looking congregation dealing with internal issues and problems, not being able to show a united friend. And so what Paul does is that he writes a letter and in that letter, he asked them to consider their call. So in verse 26, he says, consider your call. What is your call? You are saints in God. He starts the letter 
calling them saints, in spite of all their fallibilities, in spite of all their infighting, in spite of all the failures in their individual and corporate life, he still calls them saints because they are still saints of God. God has separated them. But they haven't realized their calling. Consider your call. How would you find your calling? How would a group of people who think that they are exceptionally gifted and at the same time divided between loyalties find their calling? The verse 18, the passage starts with something like the word of the cross. In various translations, you might find different wording. It could be the message of the cross. But it is the same word, logos, that is used for word. When you say word of God, it's the same word. Instead of the word of God, you have a particular expression here, the word of the cross. What does that mean? if our calling is tied with the word of the cross. God has spoken to us in many ways. God has spoken through the scripture, so that is a word of God. But God, according to the scriptures, ultimately spoke to us in Jesus Christ. He is the living word. The cross is that very act of God speaking to us in Jesus Christ. We have a lot of discussion these days about the shape of discipleship, the shape of ministry, the shape of mission. What Paul says there is that you have only one shape, which he would probably call cruciform. Your ministry and your mission is cruciform, shaped after the cross, because God has spoken to us on the cross. The power, the authority, the gifting, the wisdom, all that you normally boast about will need to be subjected to this cross. All will need to be surrendered at this cross. Because it is this cross which everyone in this world might consider powerless becomes our power. We are asked to be countercultural. We are called not to depend on the wisdom and the power that this world will give but the wisdom and the power you find in God becoming a human and dying on a cross. The word is not always spoken. The word is sometimes performed, acted out. God spoke to us on the cross. If Corinthians were able to listen to the message of that cross, they wouldn't be fighting with one another. Rather, they would be united in Christ and proclaiming this great news of joy and hope in that vibrant city of Corinth. Do we live out the word? Or do we just say, words. It was Bishop Henry Camara who said, beware how you live, because you might be the only gospel that some people will ever read. Beware how you live. You might be the only gospel that some people will ever read. That is a terrifying thought. If you are the only gospel that your colleagues and your neighbors and the people who come across you will ever read, 
What are they reading? Paul asks us to be centered around the cross. Where we disappear, our disagreements disappear, our particular ambitions disappear, and we are there performing the gospel in our own lives. That gospel of humility, the gospel of sacrifice, the gospel that brings joy and peace and hope to the world around us. A cruciform mission, a cruciform life. That's the invitation you have from Paul here. As you begin this new stage of ministry at St. John's and Christ Church, shall we pray together that we are finding our power and strength and wisdom listening to the word of the cross, not from anywhere else. That cross will unite us. We are so good sometimes defining our boundaries. But the greatest work of the Spirit and Christ is uniting people. So I sometimes tell people, forget about defining your boundaries. Begin to affirm the center, which is Christ, the cross. So considering our calling involves listening and performing and living out the word of the cross. But I think there is something more than that that Paul is pointing out there. It is also about encountering God. Verse 27 onwards, the subject is God. God chose you. God chose, twice actually, 27 and 28, starts with God choosing. And then the remaining part also, it is God who is the subject. We need to recognize that our mission and our life belongs to God. All that we do together, as parishes or beneficers and congregations or church plans, the author of our mission is God. God has chosen us. Not because we got some merits. Precisely because we don't have any of them. God chose us. And God's choices are sometimes very surprising. And Paul says that God has chosen us who don't have any worldly wisdom or gifting or understanding. You're not of noble birth. You're not of noble background in terms of wisdom. But God has chosen you. A God who chooses. The weak, the vulnerable, the marginalized. And who would use them to reach out to the people around them. And the cross says that very clearly. A God who makes himself vulnerable. We sometimes have this understanding of God who sits somewhere up on the high. Okay, and who then actually looks at us from some other world. And interferes in our life very often. But that's not the God you find in the New Testament. You find a God who makes himself so vulnerable to the extent that he became a human being, lived among us, suffered like us, and died like every other human being. A God who is right here, right in our midst. We may have to get rid of those costumes, the comic costumes that we have been dressing up God with. Here is God, right in our midst. Not as someone who understands our suffering and our situation, but as someone who suffers our suffering. I 
I just want to leave those reflections there as we begin this ministry. Let us focus on God and the cross. Everything else will follow. Let us find our wisdom, our courage, our hope, and our strength in the cross of Christ. In that God who made himself so vulnerable because he loved us so much. May we embrace that gospel of hope and joy. And may we, with humility, live out that gospel in a world of suffering, in a world of hopelessness. May we, in this vibrant city, continue to proclaim that good news of Christ, preaching a gospel of a God crucified and living out a gospel which is cruciform. May our mission and ministry and our life together be cruciform, shaped by the cross of Christ. And may God continue to bless your ministry as the two congregations, and particularly, Mike, you, as you begin your ministry as the priest in charge here today. Amen. Stand, we're going to sing together. I cast my
So will you please be seated? Gracious God, we praise and glorify you because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church that sharing in the ministry of our Saviour Christ we might be witnesses of what he has done for us. Gracious God, we praise and glorify you. Michael. Be among us as a man who rejoices to bring new Christians to baptism and to share with them the living water, Jesus Christ himself. By God's grace, we will grow in our faith and discipleship. showing God's forgiveness and healing. Together by God's grace, we will be a Christ-like community of love. Be among us a man who studies the scriptures, proclaims the word, and explains the faith. Together by God's grace, we will tell the good news of Christ to the world. Be among us as a man of prayer, offering the church's liturgy and interceding for God's people. Together by God's grace, we will worship God in spirit. Michael, be among us as a man of the Eucharist, presiding among us when we celebrate the Lord's death and resurrection. Together, by God's grace, we will seek to be the living body of Christ. Mike, Jesus said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. And so, Michael, be among us as a man who holds onto the cross of Christ and shares it with others.
share with them the word of God and the work of ministry, to celebrate with them the sacraments of the new covenant, and to encourage them in their discipleship and ministry. Together, may we make this a place where Christian people are equipped for their life and witness in God's world. Together, by God's grace, we give ourselves to the ministry of the gospel in these communities, to work for God's kingdom of justice and peace, and to share the message of Christ. And is part of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God? in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care. I, Michael Maynard Walker, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer, and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Michael Maynard Walker, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. I, Michael Maynard Walker, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chelmsford, the area Bishop of Bradwell and their successors in all things lawful and honest, so help me God. John Bishop of Bradwell, acting under the power delegated to me by Chelmsford Diocesan Area Scheme 1984. To Michael Maynard Walker, clerk in the Holy Orders, greeting. Whereas the beneficers of South Church, Christ Church, and South End St. John's have become vacant, I license you as priest in charge of the said benefices and instruct you to live in the benefice unless otherwise agreed by me. The Episcopal seal of the Bishop of Chelmsford is affixed here and due, and I have subscribed to the same on this 20th day of March 2022. Receive this cure of souls 
which is both yours and mine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Michael, remember your baptism into Christ. Remember your ordination into the Church of God. May God, who anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, anoint and empower you for the blessing of God's people. May I have the ministry team around? Ministry is the work of the whole people of God. Members of the ministry team, you have specific responsibilities to serve and lead God's people in these communities. Will you welcome Michael to the team and work creatively and faithfully with him, meeting regularly for prayer, study, and fellowship, and doing all in your power to support each other in fulfilling the ministry of Christ and working with the people of God in this place. With the help of God, we will. I commission you to work together with all God's people so that Christ may be made known and his kingdom established. May God of all faithfulness strengthen you for your ministry and commitment to each other. The God of all grace give you vision, courage, and joy, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all your work done in his name, now and forever. Michael, receive these keys in token of the responsibility which we share, and may the Lord preserve your going out and your coming in, now and always. And so, Michael, I install you as priest in charge of these parishes. Pray for your people. Lead them in worship and service and encourage them in their witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, unfortunately, you have to get up and come here, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
So people of the parishes of South Church, Christ Church, and St. John Southend, I present to you your new priest in charge, now duly licensed and installed, and I invite you to greet him and his family in the name of Christ. I commend them to your love and to your prayers. Mike, it seems you've got the job. <laughs> On behalf of uh, the Deanery chapter, uh, we, we welcome you. We know you, but we welcome you. It's wonderful uh, that these things are going so well and that you're now a priest in charge. And we will keep praying for you and supporting you and drinking your excellent coffee. And, uh, and many congratulations and to all of you here. Well, Michael, <laughs> you've been with us and of us for... Uh, a good few years now, and I've already welcomed you once, and I'll welcome you again, and uh, we're really, really pleased to have you, and you do have excellent coffee. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here still. Thank you. Shall we stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ, and in the one spirit, we were all baptized into that one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's good to see you. Peace be with you, Lucy, my chaplain. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to She's my sister. She's my little sister. Oh. So we're all related. Oh, now I can actually relate that. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't realize that before. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, peace oh, be with you. Thank you, Bishop John. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Chris. <laughs> It's <laughs> with you. It's with you. It's with you. It's with you. It's you.
Please be seated. There's many things we could pray for this morning, but it's right, I think, to focus on the needs of this particular parish, parishes, and so I'm going to, th- I'm going to pray three short prayers and uh, give some space within these prayers to allow you to make your own prayers to God. Let's pray together. First of all, a prayer for the children and young people of these parishes. And we think of the very young, some who come to the TOTS group here and the TOTS group at Christ Church as well. We pray these little ones would never know a day in their lives outside of the conscious knowledge of the love of Jesus. Think of primary age children. Think of those children at Porter's Grange, at Greenways and other local primaries. Give us, Lord, we pray, inroads into these settings with the light of Christ. We think of our teenage young people, their care and well-being, and their deepest need of assurance with your love. We thank you, Lord, for our connections with Adventure Island. We pray for more opportunities to reach this group in the years ahead. And we take a moment to think of those young lives known to us and bring them to mind in our prayers now. Gracious Father, reach out, we pray, to the children of this parish, these parishes, May may the grace of Christ win them, the love of Christ enfold them, the peace of Christ engulf them, and the Spirit of Christ empower them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's uh, say a prayer now for the elderly, those more senior in these parishes. We pray for those, Lord, who are well able um, to live a full and active life that they would use their healthy years to discover the fullness of the gospel. We also pray for those who are less mobile and less able to do the things they always used to. May they know Christian solidarity from the church and the solace and comfort of prayer. We pray for those particularly who are alone and who have no one to care for them. We pray, Lord, that you would provide and enable us and enable ministries that will reach and remain with them. And again, we bring to mind those we know of in this particular phase of life and that we want to name before you, Lord. Gracious God, to all whose strength is failing and faculties diminishing, grant the assurance that your love in Christ encircles them and that in the fullness of time you will bring new beginnings and a life that will never perish, spoil or fade. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then finally, we want to bring those, uh, neither young or old, but who face the greatest challenges and vulnerabilities in these parishes. Lord, those who have come from abroad and are trying to rebuild their lives here in Southend. Lord, may they know you as a firm foundation and your church and your people as a refuge. Those on the receiving end of prejudice, those who are treated unfairly and face inequality. Lord, we pray that you would move us toward them and give us hearts for justice. Those who face daily battle with addiction or violence or intimidation or neglect, Lord, enlarge our heart and create in these churches a greater love 
for people made in your image. And again, we name those we know of in our hearts before we know. Righteous God, grant that the day will soon come when the worth of all will be recognised, when suffering is relieved and the redemption of all things is seen and enjoyed at the culmination of all the ages. And so we say, merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, it wouldn't be a proper church service without some notices. So I'm going to give two, and then Lucy, do you want to give one? Is that why you're coming up? Okay. <laughs> we have two from me. We have a churchyard uh, makeover that's coming up next Saturday, just before Steve's licensing. It's an event for all the family. Uh, so if you'd like to come down and join, those of us who are not part of the family here, you're very welcome to. You can grab a spade or something. And we're going to try and uh, renew some of the area around the church. That's next Saturday, starting at 9.30 uh, till 12.30, and then we'll all head over to Christchurch. And then we are starting today, for the next three weeks, 1,000 miles for Aspiration. Uh, Aspirations, which is a charity working in the parish here with the most vulnerable, those we've just been praying for. It's a wonderful cause. We're getting on board together as a church family. We're going to be logging our miles on, a, on an app called Strava and uh, trying to clock up a thousand of them whilst also sharing a Just Giving page far and wide to raise, I hope, several thousand pounds for a really, really worthy cause this Lent. That starts today and it ends on Palm Sunday in three weeks' time, so we've got to get going. Um, Lucy, did you want to say something about refreshment? So when the service finishes, please don't leave. Um, If you come and gather in the south transept, um, you will see we have an amazing cake made by um, Fiona. And we're going to do a a short um, presentation there um, for Mike and Rebecca. And we also have more refreshments in this um, hall to the side. So please do stay and mingle for a while after it finishes. Thanks, Lucy. Bishop. Okay, before we sing my favorite hymn, shall we receive the blessing? (laughs) Almighty God, who for the salvation of the world gives to his people many gifts and ministries to the advancement of his glory, stir up in you the gifts of his grace and sustain each one of you in your own ministry, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Mike, the Cure of Souls is a ministry alongside all those who live or work in these communities. The church must be open to God's world and to all who seek him. Michael, you are called to help the people who are refreshed here by their worship and fellowship to live out their faith in these communities so that God's love may be known. Together by God's grace. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in. There is one body, one spirit, one hope in God's call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God, Father of all, over all and in all, to whom Christ ascended on high, and through his Spirit he gives us gifts. Some are apostles, some are his prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers he gives us, so we can minister together to build up his body, to be mature in the fullness of Christ. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Go in the power of Christ. We have a Gospel to proclaim. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Shall we give him another clap? Yeah. <laughs>